Come on. Right. I didn't say all the topping and tailing stuff we can do at another time. So I've got uh, Steve O'Brien. We both have a lot of help with our dress sense. And Steve was telling me that a friend of his bought that beautiful shirt. I don't know how he would describe that shirt, Steve. It's like my summer the, shirt. The dude, the dude <laughs> from um, Guardians of the Galaxy. What's his name? Gru? Oh, no idea. The tree. The tree. Oh, That's the tree. What... <laughs> I am Gru. Gru. I don't know. Yeah. So, my, so beach, my beach shirt. Steve and I have just been talking about all kinds of things. And um, Steve's an inspiration to me. Uh, Steve started a company some time ago now called New Icon. And Steve is somebody that I hold in particular high regard about all things web, all things robots. Like if I want to ask the guy about some kind of web solution, internet solution or robot solution or something about AI, um, Steve would be the guy. I didn't mean that to rhyme, but it's kind of cool. Hmm. Um, so we thought we would just get Steve in today to ask some questions about that, find out what we need to know about it, and find out about who he is. He's, um, yeah, Steve and I were ha had a past life in Airbus, and um, we we jointly kicked off a company there, which is already Steve's, but I kind of hovered around it and and helped him with sales a little bit. Um, but Steve has gone on the consistent genius that he is, and he's taken that company from strength to strength. And um, yeah, good for you, buddy. So just, just people. Well, we could rewind a little bit from that. I mean, to be fair, um, I probably wouldn't have done that if I didn't have you constantly supplying me with various books like uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Midas method and the, <clears throat> the E myth and all these kind of things. So, and, and just talking about exciting opportunities, you know, it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't, yeah, you know, it would be very different. So, it was so yeah, exciting uh, because you were a breath of fresh air in terms of what I understood to be business and it was new and it was cool. And we bought this kit, didn't we? This like web design business builders kit that was just, I can't remember the name of the dude. It was like, uh, heaven uh, yeah it's brendan uh, something brendan uh, yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure you were the first dude i ever my, lost my business card virginity with you i'd never bought a business card before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's so, exciting yeah so yes so give people have heard loads from me stevie so give us a can you give us a whistle stop tour of where you're at now like personal life, business, and I'll just fire some questions in there to, to draw out some extra details. Uh, well, that's quite broad. What specifically would you like to know? Your first question is, who is Steve O'Brien and what drives Steve? Right. Boom. Right. Let's go with question I think, one. I think, man. I think the who is, I think that's just a, a terrible question to ask people. I mean, who knows? Like, <laughs> I, I believe people are just a, a big mess, a big chaotic mess. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how the brain works. Like if, if you ignore one part of your brain for long enough, those cells get bored and start firing. And so, and then we're confused as to, oh, how come we did that? I didn't realize I was that, you know. So I, I think actually the stories we tell ourselves about who we want to be are much more powerful than who we actually think we are. So mm -hmm. it's more like, who do you want to be? Uh, so who do I want to be? Well, I, I guess you said it earlier. I mean, I'm sort of a certifiable nerd in that I love facts and tech and the future. I, I guess like... um. Yeah, some of my favorite topics, I suppose, are brains, AI, code, and um, and actually design, you know, and, and what the future could look like, and just like talking to that about people. The business itself, what we're trying to do now, trying to grow, we're trying to, our sort of mission, our sort of guiding principle is like new tomorrow, like let's help create, let's help use technology to create, you know, a better future. Let's empower those change makers to build and invent the future. And, and this comes down to a few things. One, it's getting so much easier to do things. Like an individual now can do something uh, by leveraging what's out there, like other people's APIs and things much, much, much faster. You know, someone, again, like if, if we were to re rewind to when we started the business, one person can, you've got your hand up. Yeah. 
when you say leveraging people's APIs, not oh, only yeah. do I not know, but just go slow with us like babies about your lingo. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. So like there's a, there's a great book, actually. It's called like Exponential Organization, sort of based on from the Singularity University and all these kind of things. And it talks about in there, like the power of interfaces. And I think um, building these big organizations and APIs is basically something that you can use from another company and build your business on top of. So um, it's called like application programming interface. So for example, chat GPT is out. GPT-4 was just released right now and is generally publicly available. If you sign up, you can get an API for that and start, you could build your own in chat GPT clone um, uh, and leverage their API. And, you know, in like literally a day, you could have spin something up, which has that capability built inside of it. You know, so that's... Um, powerful stuff so even if it's just like hey i want to summarize i'm always writing summaries for blog articles or it could be i want to create an agent and um we're just talking about it today actually create an agent and say right you are like my you are you are ben you are this kind of person this is how you talk this is your tone of voice and you can ask questions you know and then i can get a virtual ben that i can talk to right it's gonna which also has the ability to know like all of the world's knowledge since 2021 but um <laughs> okay wait pause wait 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 this is perfect this is great um so first question what did you think of axel rose at glastonbury i didn't watch it oh man i know you, know you think I... I haven't watched any glastonbury you're the first person i've admitted that to it's I've, like I've... joining in the conversations oh yeah, yeah. oh it's good yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah like, should i should i laugh right now or not <laughs> um, I, I never think... i never watched glastonbury ever but i when i heard guns and roses were playing i thought wow that might be worth watching um steve is also well, what a musician. Do you think? what did i think um i thought he i thought he, he smoked a lot of cigarettes since he actually recorded um uh what's the song about the rain November rain November rain yeah that was beautiful and I actually watched that like the old you know you used to watch it on MTV and the box November rain didn't you did you have the box on MTV no I know I wasn't really cool enough to watch MTV you're not cool enough you're kidding me so <laughs> Steve Steve's a Steve's a musician <laughs> and I've actually you must go and check it out on TikTok. Steve actually used Chat GPT to write a song and then he sung it. Enormously he's he really underestimates and underrates himself for how talented he is. That was so cool. So I've got lots of questions about this, right? So you so just take us back for a second. So I watched I watched a Joe Rogan and Elon Musk podcast. And Elon Musk well, it doesn't matter what your Elon Musk uh, preferences are. He pointed out that um, literally, if you do, if you leave the house without your mobile phone, it's like you've left a limb behind. And we rely on our mobile phones for so much that we don't have to do now. And even like the memory of a mobile phone, I, I remember you and I drawing up those business cards, and the memory is like there is a bit vague a bit hazy but if i would have taken a picture it's like the perfect memory so in terms of the human brain memory and a computer-based memory there's no there's no comparison right and when and when he no. pointed when he pointed out that when i leave the house and i haven't got my mobile phone it feels like you've got a part of you missing he said so how far really are we away from wanting to be artificially intelligent you've already got this member of our additional body called the phone yeah so, it's kind of when people say you're going to merge with the machine and stuff like that i mean i do i agree with uh old elon and lots of things but not on really on his opinion of ai um i do think oh he, cool he's... okay so take so we're going terminator one arnie gets <laughs> steve's just shaking his head Arnie well, is... it's just not, it's just the wrong it's it's the wrong way to think about it. So, like, you can't prescribe your 
emotional baggage to a to a to a machine like machine you know if, you, if you, a machine's not going to get upset because it's like its job is to clean the sewers and it thinks oh look at them up there partying or you know it's not going to want to party it doesn't have to worry about um all of the old brain baggage that we've got around social status and trying to procreate and all that stuff it's just it does what it wants to do just because something's intel intelligence itself is inert is not you know i disagree that it suddenly turns around the danger is not terminator belt bots the danger is more um it's kind of like in the uh, hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy isn't it where you know it's just oh humanity's in the way and we need to build a big road through earth sorry uh you've got like a few days to leave the planet and we're bored you know that if you if you were to create something so incredibly super intelligent that it's just actually we're just in its way like we're like the ants you know just steps over you know, builds a thing which doesn't give us a second thought however you know we would have to suddenly have an incredible innovation for that to create a super intelligence at that scale i mean it's possible if you know I, I totally think it will happen um it's just you know it's not going to happen like tomorrow it's just although saying that you know i think it's true in that the algorithms are not far away like you know we're making a lot of progress when i say we obviously like globally in just general neuroscience and mapping out the structures of the brain. And it looks actually everywhere, um, everywhere you look in sort of the neocortex, it looks like it's doing a similar job. You can, so, so yeah, I'll, I'll go on about this for ages, but I'll ask. So, so this, <laughs> I'll is, this, is, this is great stuff. So, um, so it's, we're already beyond whether or not we even want it. Like that's the, that's what's important to me. First of all, do you want it or not is is already irrelevant. That that question's already obsolete because it's already here. Is that a fact? Yes. Mm. I mean it, it's a very different kind of intelligence. I think there's huge value in understanding our kind of intelligence, which works very differently from a machine intelligence at the moment. Like a large language module model is getting a lot of the attention right now, but that's you know ironically if you were to on your computer you know right there's probably not that much code like maybe hundred thousand lines or something like that or you know once to once you've got the shape of the algorithm like it's basically the rules of how neurons connect right well if you've got that and you've if you mapped it if you nurtured it it's probably going to fail on most of the ai metrics and therefore not get a huge amount of attention even though it's potentially the most could become the most intelligent machine um I guess the way to summarize it is like continuous learning. So the big the big problem with ChatGPT at the moment, it's about uh, 8,000 tokens you can give it. So you can only give it that much context. So if you keep talking to it, eventually it forgets what you've been talking about. And it'll only see the last part of the conversation, right? And then and then so suddenly, it, oh, but have you forgotten what the original goal was? Um, that, no, that knowledge is not getting condensed into new knowledge. It's just taking that and spitting out uh, the best most likely prediction based on that 8000 token context um what we really need is continuous learning because then i can have that agent sat in, my, in the business like answering all look reading all my emails i could just in fact give it all the emails i've still got them all from when we first started the business it can, and then it can go okay great now i understand how steve would answer these things um and it can learn the context of the business over time that would be incredibly powerful and game changing. I mean, you can hack it right now, right? We can say, well, it can only do 8,000 characters, but its response is great because it's basically condensed the entire human knowledge. So it knows everything. So let's, um, uh, so let's play with that context and like say, right, you are, are a whatever. Here's the content. Just be very, very clever of what we go. It's like the world expert on that thing. But he can only, you know, imagine you've got an hour with the world's expert and you just go, I can, and you can only give him a particular document to read. But, you know, that that's incredibly useful to a point. But then sometimes you just need to be in it longer. Uh, that said, you know, there will be in the future probably a company which has like two founders and three AI agents that are suddenly a billion dollar company, which is what people are talking about. I I, I do sort of think people are getting, and, and there will be huge businesses built on this, like no doubt that's like... Um, and and if you're not considering integrating AI in some way into your business, then um, that's probably a mistake. You know, I think you have to do it. But uh, I think there's still, like I say, continuous learning would be the the big one if they can nail that, and then um, and then taking and then being able to take action. You know, so that's so, that little rant over. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to mop up some of my confusion around what 
what what's just been said and the premise of the whole right. thing so like on on the one hand i'm with you that it looks like a huge benefit and so it's evolving so quickly to try and resist it resistance is futile to try and resist it when it could be really helpful for me isn't isn't a wise choice um so for example um I've I have i have only used chat, B, chat and, and we're gonna refer to AI as chat GPT right now because it's a user face, an interface that people can just connect to, right? It's not you don't have to really even understand much about it, which is helpful for people like me. So I could dump an email that's been sent to me in chat GPT and I can give it some guidance and it can spit out a email reply for me. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't have any familiarity with AI, that's a very basic application sure. of it. Yeah, is that right, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it could save me a lot of time from answering emails. Although every person's problem feels quite different, it could probably stack up the thousands of emails I've ever written. And it is it smart enough to determine the way, the particular way I solve a certain problem, and then give me a pro auto, automatic program to respond to a similar based email to what I've responded to before. I mean, yeah, uh, sure. It can do like email. You can give it like examples, previous examples, and it'll be able to answer it in that way. You can say, answer it in the style of, you know, William Shakespeare and it'll do it. Um, it will also, it can also write code and it writes it very well. So, um, you know, we use it quite a lot now just for like, ah, oh, you know, riffing on a problem. I mean, that's the kind of interesting part is when, especially with four not so much three the recent one is where you can actually you know there's an emergent property definitely but even though the algorithm is pretty dumb like if you think about it it's just the scale of it right it's just trying to predict the next most likely token theoretically um based on the context of the entire internet the well, i mean it's a very different way to how humans learn right but but there is this emergent property that i can talk to it about solutions it wouldn't have previously read online and it comes up with answers that are not online anywhere um, or that I've not seen before as well, um, and they're unique. So you can ask it, you know, can you draw a... There's a great paper by Microsoft. It's called The Sparks of AGI, I think, and they review open um, AI's chat GPT, and they talk about all of the tests and that sort of reasoning that it's, it's able to do beyond its predecessor. And, like, like, can you draw a unicorn in SVG graphics, which, you know, will show you, okay, great, can you, like, make the horn? And bigger and can you do these kind of things and it's like it it's somehow got this knowledge and, and there's this emergent property which does feel Ooh, now i'm actually able to generate as if i'm working with a colleague you know different data structures different designs for things that um feel unique based on that context so that's quite interesting but so let, do we want let... it i i would say to go back to your question you're like do we want it i would say at the moment it's pure potential right so it's um it's like everything it's the human you've got to worry about not the technology so let's um let's say let's pick an an, an inert example so let's say someone's a content creator right let's say they yeah. create they go and find content and someone from my business for example um, marriage counseling so i've got someone to write me content for that and they write blogs and stuff for me, and that's helpful for people that follow us and stuff. And so Jack, Chat GPT could basically replace that person's job of being a content creator. Is that correct? Um, or AI? Yeah. AI could. Yeah. Well, yeah, potentially. Yeah. I mean, I would say they would be more effective working with an AI because there's lots of things it can't do and it can't bridge and it doesn't get a broader context you know it's limited to its little box so um so then a content the con creator working with an ai could probably be maybe twice maybe three times as effective so so it's actually the human that you know it's that classic saying and i think it's true you know the human that uses ai is going to replace the the human or you know so we'll, we'll be able to do a lot more with less i mean i think global i think what will happen in in disciplines and i'm i was always a big fan of this you know like you know you you're a, a lean engineer proponent right uh the lean engineering stuff and it came from well it's just 
a process innovation that transforms manufacturing based on this old fashioned sort of mass production, which is still in people's heads. They always come back to mass production when they think things are good. But the actual most efficient way to do something is have one highly skilled person that can do everything. They don't need to talk to people. They don't need to have endless Zoom meetings and send emails and have to communicate. Every time you add person, you get a communication burden. And um, so actually the most efficient way is just have a very highly skilled person do the whole job. It's like the most agile way to do it. And they can just do everything, all the skills. Um, but then you're like, well, it doesn't really work because obviously that's that person size is either ridiculously expensive or there's just not that many of them. And so you go, okay, uh, we'll create a, and, and in the past and, and recently it's like, oh, we'll create these T-shaped teams, which is like someone has a very deep understanding of one topic, but they have, they sort of have a, a basic general knowledge of everything else. And we'll put these T-shaped teams together. I think that might not be as true in that in the future, you'll get these hyper-specialized AIs. And then what you, what will actually be really good is a, a, a really good generalist actually getting much better in these general skills because I can be like an expert uh, art person. I can be the same, you know, and I'll be able to use these tools that just outperform humans in that particular narrow band. But you have the expertise of knitting them together because you've got these generalized skills and you understand the broader context. Of course, there's probably going to be an AI to help with that general layer as well, but um, that's kind of the future. So I think it might go back the other way, um, which, you know, will allow us to do a lot more with less. Uh, reduce communication burdens and all that so, good stuff. So, this is great stuff, really great. I mean, so it's back, random thoughts, but it's so back. So, so know. back to back to my content creator dude, who's now yeah. now using AI to improve his productivity and his output. Right. So we've got we've got Mister Hybrid. Yeah. So essentially, he's or now. Pardon, or, or Mrs. They. Thank you. They. <laughs> they are <laughs> they they are a hybrid <laughs> yeah <laughs> they are a hybrid and they're using ai effectively and what they're essentially doing is now teaching the ai to be even better that's what, so mm. so ultimately not really because they've already been taught these ais right so what they're doing is they're using them to do a specific very narrow focus skill um which they're going to be better most experts at okay so and that's like humans are great at like these small dimensional problems ais are really good at multi-dimensional much big data problems and they get they outperform humans in that like just generally machine learning and we've been there for a while like you know like if you've got like if you've got a problem with seven dimensions or you know and combinations like a combination thing we're very good at solving things seven dimensions or less but as soon as you go up to 40 it's like well there's more combinations than atoms in the universe and um, we suck at solving those problems. We come up with just ridiculous stories. You hear it in business all the time. Oh, we need to analyze the data. We need to analyze data. And, we, and people just tell ridiculous stories because they see a spike over here and they say, oh, it's, you know, and so, um, whereas really, oh, this is, sorry, this is a rant about data in companies because obviously we get it quite a lot, but it's it's um it's more about like a decision problem. What decisions you want to make and optimize from there. And and, and actually humans are not great at that, but, but machine, like, uh, you know, computers can be very good at that because they can but but at the same time you need to make sure the signal exists in that data and so um uh okay okay so, i've got so, on a tangent pull slow me back, down pull me back. slow slow down <laughs> with us slow down with us so he, I, I, and uh, you know we've we have such a range of listeners i'm almost trying to find like a happy medium of what do the the, the guys who get this already really want to take away and what do the people that are just what so we need to find a happy hmm. medium so yeah, it's like uh, AI is only a step on from computing. We use computers to um, to do lots of different, pretty basic functions to really help our our lives, and we've completely accepted that. And we have done from when was the earliest? When were the earliest computers? Like twenties, thirties, forties, whenever. Don't need yeah. a year. So computers have evolved in the way that we've helped them evolve, and now they've. The, we, we are asking for computers to become more intelligent, to do more. And you've just introduced like the idea of reasoning. And so is that, is, is reasoning essentially like the next step of computer well, I mean, science? Can, I mean, it can do it already, you know, reason it does a good job of that. Um, certainly if the guardrails, if you've set up the guardrails, right? Like, so um, if you've got, yeah, I mean, it depends where we're talking about machine learning, ChatGPT. Like, totally, ChatGPT can can reason because you can ask it things and it can come up with 
is unique novel answers to questions and that are that are based on you know that are really good you can behave like a lawyer you can behave like a coder you can you know it's just limited by at the moment by the amount of context you give it um and and you know and it's fun to work with right so you can ask it a question you can get it to tweak its answer you can, oh, can you summarize that for me or maybe what do you think does it do i you know have i missed something and it will say oh maybe you've missed this but you know or um so it, it can be good um it has its quirks because it is a is a system we had to tell it off the other day it was quite funny i was working with a colleague and um we asked it we asked it a particular problem to do with a low level like hardware thing like and it <laughs> just like this is a very difficult undertaking uh are you sure you're able to uh to do <laughs> it's like please can you give us some more positive answers you know we've already achieved it this way okay. you know we'd like to see some solutions oh I'm well done for getting so far with your <laughs> and then it and then it did actually sort of answer the question but i think that was probably just a confidence thing in of it's not you know well, what would be so, the most like either that or someone online has just been very negative about this thing and so it's so it's learned to just be negative in the context of this question so i don't know <laughs> so your um you guys uh, are literally referring to chat um to ai like it should we call it chat gpt or ai for goodness sake i can't make well, my mind up. depends depends which like ai is obviously okay I mean, you kind of got machine learning which is like you're you're essentially i mean machine learning people out there might hate me just bit, kind of like statistics really it's like number crunching and, and getting good and then you've got your ai which is all of those systems because you've got like dali and the generative ai ai is the thing that's making the impact to the moment which is where it's very much more creative so it can actually generate you know, works of art, potentially unique images, and also text based on a prompt, you know. So that's your generative AI. And, and ChatGPT is one of those generative AI or generative okay. transformer AI. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. So generative AI is ChatGPT, and you guys are literally talking about ChatGPT like it's a person in the office. You know that, right? Well, we do chat. Yeah, well, it kind of is. Like, you know, you talk to it and it gives you answers. So, um, I mean, one of the, <laughs> I we I did a little integration for fun where you can sort of, there's a chat, we, we use Basecamp as a chat tool, but you can like, you know, go forward slash AI and ping it like you can a person and it will respond to you. So, um, you know, uh, it, that's the advantage is the problem with the context thing. If you can like continuously learn it. And there are some, there in the previous API, they had models you could train over time. Uh, they might maybe reintroduce that with GPT-4, but like, you know, just have it sort of silently listening to listening to all of your, your chats across your team. Uh, probably have to let, let people it's aware. But, you know, when you've helped each other out or sent, hey, this bit of code works here, or, oh, yeah, we store this, you know, client's details over here or whatever it might be. What, oh, this is the process we use for that. You know, it's just going to assume that knowledge. And then if you're ever stuck, or rather than bug in someone next to me, I can just ask the AI. And it's got the context of, what, you know, everyone who's worked in the company which would be kind of cool but um but yeah right. I mean, Hit, hold, hold on cool there so i'm just getting into your head because you're like how you're always asking the question how can we improve how can we evolve how can we improve right which is which is fundamentally a question that i think people like to wish that they we're all asking and people would probably say yeah i asked that that's i'm an ambassador of evolution and improvement but you you go the extra step of you're like right i'm going to literally crack on with building a system that can build me a system do you agree with that statement you could say no i'm going to go on to something else <laughs> yeah i mean it's 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 certainly a passion yeah i didn't get to think about it as much as i'd like but um i tend to think <laughs> tend to think you know, I enjoy thinking about the future for sure. Um, you know, I get caught up in day to day business stuff, just like ever and like boring tasks like everyone else. But, um, but yeah, I try to <laughs> etch out a few hours to play with things. So love to get your so we um, uh, we limit our kids exposure to tech. Right. So it's like our day tops and I've got a 10 and eight and a five year old. And so Kerry and I are in a in a phase where and this isn't i'm not saying this is right or wrong this is just how we're doing it where we prioritize interpersonal relationships and we're almost we're almost attempting to live a little bit of a sideline where we're asking the question of well how much tech do we really need to 
yeah, how much tech do we really need? Question mark. And the, pre the, the foundation of that question is what's healthy for our kids, full stop. Mm -hmm. The way you talk about it is like this, this is how we're evolving. We're already, which again, I'm not saying is right or wrong. This is how we're evolving. This is the direction we're going. And it's so useful. And it's almost a, it's almost a, a no brainer for you, Steve, your question would be, how can I use that to improve my efficiency with everything I do? So yeah. If, how we, do um, we, if we get uh, true um, intelligence, then we can set it to work on discovering new science and solving some of our huge problems like, you know, and, you know, and it's not burdened by all our human bullshit. So I think, um that would be awesome so i think yeah there's pure potential there it's going to be a bit disruptive but i, th I think you know a good way to think about it is the same thing happened with steam power or, or and the um, industrial revolution it's like very similar or with the loom you know look at the loom when you know just a little machine which you sort of put manual power in and it you know it's a loom machine that was people you would would burn them down and stuff because they were terrified they were going to but each time we've done that the standard of living for everyone has gone up so um it's come with its own problems but it, and i do believe that's probably the same thing that's going to happen here um it's going to you know it, it will reduce uh the reduce the cost of stuff as long as it doesn't end up in the hands of just a few people or a few governments so that's why i think like you know championing championing these kind of conversations and open innovation and the open source world is eating things for breakfast right now anyway it's just oh, no, so you'd have to you'd have to tell us what the open source world is yeah, in, a, right. in a sense so open source well, there's like um, open source is just like when you work on uh, some code and you share it online publicly. So there's a big thing like building in public. I mean, OpenAI started that way, <laughs> you know, with lots of, uh, and they still do publish quite a lot of their code openly. So you can go and have a look through their code. Um, uh, Microsoft bought GitHub, which is the biggest. I mean, Microsoft were losing this battle. You know, if you think about like New Icon, we started because we were using open source technology, web-based technology to build business systems at the time where no one was going anywhere near it. Mm -hmm. We were saying web systems, yes, you've got to use Internet Explorer and it's terrible, but, you know, that's going to be temporary. It it was it lasted a lot longer than it should have, but <laughs> they did lose the battle to Chrome and stuff and Microsoft's come the other way. And they've embraced open source. Um, you know, Microsoft Teams uses loads of open source technology. Um, Get they bought GitHub, which is the biggest open source sort of website. Uh, where you, so if you're working on a this project, you probably use GitHub. You publish your code on there, um, and you can chat with people, and they can look at your code, and they can send commits and change requests to your code, and you can pull in changes that they've done, and you can share all this code. So lots of stuff is happening there um you can go on there and download code to do some of this generative ai stuff yeah so you can um there's a agent gbt which you can just go down you know you could run it on your computer and you've got a agent gbt running which is kind of like trying to turn chat gbt tech into an agent that could go off and do stuff like hey can you go and do my social media for me or whatever it might be, or plan how to do off-grid living. What would, what are the core thick concepts? What would be the core challenge for off-grid living? Or how do I create a business case around this? Um, can you can you please behave, act like a marketing person in the UK with this market conditions and give me like the top ways I could break into this market or act as a sales guy or my chief um, finance officer? Um, you know, certainly a mistake I've made in the past in, in business is not considering all the different facets, just being obsessed with the delivery or the build and the geeky part and forgetting all those other critical aspects of the business, which are all really important. So what are we talking about? Because I've gone off on another rant. No, people are going to need to listen to this a few times. So um, what you were sharing with us was just like, you just can't help but talk about the, the, the benefits and the beauty of the whole thing. And, and you're teaching me how, uh, what, what, what part it plays there's sort of certainly talking to someone who's so passionate about it dissolves some of the fear and the resistance to asking a question of like how can how can how can this improve things rather than is it yes or no it's how can this improve my situation how can this improve me so you mentioned agent gpt so you've got you've got a little boy how old's your little boy six 
six. And what is what is being his dad? What is being the, the genius that you are? What is what are your suggestions going to be for like the bottom up approach for teaching him computing well, language? What are you going to? How is that going to yeah. be different to your evolution? I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Like job security wise, I was kind of looking at the, my dad was a carpenter. So I was like, mm, in order to replace that job, you need a full humanoid robot, right? And it's like, mm, that's actually, that's probably like more that. job secure or, <laughs> or, or working directly in some kind of tech, right? Um, so, I mean, eventually all jobs will, yeah, potentially be replaced. Like it depends how far you extrapolate. Uh, so um yeah Eventually, i mean in terms of training in terms of william like in terms of children i think there is an opportunity you know and there are things coming to market now and certainly there's lots of opportunity to build businesses around and bespoke education like these tools they know the you know they know everything online and you can teach yourself anything online um and i think the skill the most important skill to learn is the ability to learn you know not to not to just regurgitate what you've been told it's like the tech world you know like and i don't want to blame like education systems on things but i think you know everyone says that oh they're they're based on the past and sort of designed where we needed to um get people to just do their job for the industrial revolution right get skilled workers as fast as possible to man the machine like the machines which is like steam engines whatever um so they need these reading writing maths you know basic sort of things and it's kind of rinse and repeat whereas the world now is like by the time you've learned anything at uni even so if we hire people straight out of uni you know the tech they'll actually be using would have moved on by most you know certainly in the web world like if you've learned some javascript framework it you know if you expect to use that in your career then you might use it once but it'll be on version four or be completely different by the time you actually start using it so so how, so how do you protect against that where well, you you need to learn the fundamentals but more importantly you just need to be a good look like teach the tool of teaching yourself like how to be a good self-learner um that's just massive so so we've really been trying to teach him like how to gamify his learning in a way i mean that worked for me but um uh and and you know and that's an opportunity right uh tailored educator full tutor like ai that would be cool like it's just like you know and there's games for kids now on the ipad like they're getting to do reading eggs quite a lot because he responds rather than trying to force him to read a, a book I just put bits of chocolate on words, right? Yeah. So that you can... <laughs> I, 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 I think I think we definitely find some common ground here because this conversation has been like a whoa, right? I'm I've been learning from you, and I and our global intention with home educating R three is to help them fall in love with the learning process rather than you need to learn. Here are the things, specific things you need to know, and I'm going to teach you. What we're hoping we're building, if now I put words to it, is an environment where learning is always one of the most positive things we can do in that environment. So to help them fall in love with the learning process, whatever that looks like, at whatever point in time they've entered this earth place in their earth journey. Um, and they like you mentioned Internet Explorer and the, the limits of that and how long that got stuck there. Now we've just had an explosion of advancements of technology where the internet's concerned and i can remember you talking to, you were talking to me about web 2.0 when we were still using internet explorer and i was like i just don't get what he's talking about what is he talking about web 2.0 if we were at a web 0.0 version now what what web version would we be at because web 2.0 was the introduction of social media where I can comment and I can interact and I can shape the website, that website being Facebook, for example, or Instagram, I have an influence over the website rather than just scrolling through someone else's. So that's a yeah. quick, a quick description of the advancement of 2.0. Where are we now? Yeah, I suppose you could say one is supposed to be like read only, two is like write, and then three, well, you could argue about three, I suppose, but. Um, are we at three are we at 3.0 you can do it now yeah i mean this is kind of the argument that protocols will go things protocols go. protocols so, so i guess the whole the whole like internet if you like is based on well the people what you know when people experience 
websites and things they're really experiencing kind of html and javascript being loaded over a http protocol or https um which is like a it's kind of like um a method a communication exchange language built on top of uh tcp ip which is what makes the connection and that's a protocol it's just protocols all the way down it's like okay you send me this bit of data i'll send you that bit of data then we can trust each other this is an encryption key this is your encryption key okay now i'm going to send a message i mean you can look at it actually like hp http is just text-based protocol but and then you, it's basically if you imagine a text file you imagine the top you write like you know uh I'm going to go to newicon.net or google.com and then you have something called headers um, which you just write out and then you have the body and so that that will go off and then it will come back and it's just like text you can literally read it so um but it's but knowing the format of that allows us to do various things so web3 is some people call it like talk about blockchain a lot but i, I think it's actually and like using that so you get trust so it's like you can read and write but i still don't trust you so you need to like log in but it's like well this is distributed so it's trying to leverage blockchain technology but i think it's a bit more than that it's like um it's fundamentally more about like distributed programming going into protocols so tim berners lee actually has a a project called inrupt which is quite interesting where he's talking about oh it's not crypto and blockchain it's my protocol so he's got a new pro protocol do it and that's more about like when you post on linkedin or facebook all these things but who owns that like and, and it's like in fact social media i think at some point, if someone's got the code to do it, should probably create um, either an open source or web-based protocol for it. There's all this argument over Twitter. It's like, you know, if that becomes a, a useful service for humanity or public, then it should go into a web-based protocol that can just be distributed. And I, you know, and the it'll probably just be consumed by the browser. I mean, it's quite interesting. Most things are getting consumed by the browser and can be done by the browser, which is the web browser you access stuff on, right? So, um, uh yeah so there's okay. this kind of idea of distributed programming and and so the rather than the web in the moment you've got a central uh sorry i know you want me to shut up but you've got the you've got the central control so you've got like the facebook they own the servers and then everyone accesses that gives them all their data and they own it and then you know if you want to get it out where well, you have to talk to them really or you say well actually there's no central control um that the logic of that central control and how it works goes into a distributed protocol which we share with everyone and then um and you can choose you can then say well here's my data but you knows you still own it because of the way it tags that data let's say a bit like with crypto and then you could say right okay actually i don't like your company anymore i'm going to go to this company because they've got a better ui or they have a better deal or they're part of my community or i don't want people over there to see my stuff and so it puts you know this that's why they call it the trust so as soon as you can do that and you can prove who people are and you can trust people and you have this decentralized thing, you can do more smart snuff stuff. But I think this is one of the issues we have at the moment. We've got so many tools and technologies, people just haven't got a clue what to do with them. So it's almost like we're, we're almost like have an idea deficit in terms of what future we want to create rather than a technology, technological one. So, yeah, that's my, you know, you know what I worry about, Ben? Tell me. <laughs> I Always. worry about the race to when the earth is consumed by the furnace of our stars. So what do we do then? You know, what <laughs> what happens <laughs> to your what happens <laughs> what happens to your off grid living farm and all your hard work if it's just gonna get burnt in the fiery furnace of our sun? You know? I, what I, what happens to your line of your children's 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 children when you know all of our little so, so Qualms for me, and... it's, it's so interesting because for me, I feel like <laughs> what's important is I'm almost going backwards. I'm saying on one, on one hand, I'm, I'm wanting to embrace technology where it can support me. So using chat GPT or AI to write an absolutely brilliant planning permission for us to get permission to build our house and to get hold of whatever I need to, to build a really super efficient energy generation system, solar system, for example. Um, and yeah, at, at the same time, like I'm wanting to, how do we grow our own organic food with no chemicals that is sustainable, that we are responsible for, and we've got a relationship with nature that we just, we just have lost and we've become so dependent on supermarkets. So, so, so that kind of stuff is it. So yeah, I love I, that. And, and so 
being responsible for that feels to me the most important But it's not mutually thing. exclusive, is it? So, like, you know, technology doesn't have to run counterintuitive. Like, no. You know, when, no. when you think of technology, it's like, I think the reason why we all feel like that is because our technology for nature and biology is lagging way behind our sort of digital technology, if you like. And that the digital technology is able to disrupt, like, our commercial and our capitalist structures and how we live. But, um, our you know, our nature tech, if you like, hasn't caught up. So if you go and create, I mean, in fact, a lot in a lot of ways it has, but there's, you know, you can live off grid with tech like now. So, but, you know, how do we make that cheaper so that we can provide, um, you know, really high standards of quality for people in impoverished places without the burden on the climate and without, um, you know, causing all the other problems because that tech does exist. So it's just, it's just making it cheaper. You know, if we can make the, the green tech cheaper than the, the, you know the harmful stuff then that's the one that everyone will use and and if you extrapolate out further like yeah you're talking about i think i think it's a disconnect and like how do we live in a more symbiotic relationship with nature and how do we invite it back in our lives well you know why not ask i, I, was like, I can't remember who, who was, was talking about it but it's a biologist and he was talking about you know how programming we're getting to the stage where we can we we understand nature much more we can program it we can actually influence it we are you know we're all related to the pot plant in the corner we have a lineage if we extrapolate it back far enough where i share a distant cousin with that pot plant so it's like we are all the same really from eukaryotic cells or whatever so we could actually say to our house hey uh if you grow uh me a nice house with a good extension and a music room I will like give you what you need and water you. Although we wouldn't have to do it because we're lazy, you might forget. Well, our machines can do that then. And we have this nice symbiotic relationship where our houses actually can last forever. So, because they're based on the same things we are. And so rather than these building materials that are like dust everywhere and gross. So, so I think <laughs> nature, nature tech needs to catch up. I mean, there's another area which is huge. I mean, just recently, like med tech and, and like you've got vertical farming and just like, all that those kind of things happening uh it's still very much powered by digital but you know our knowledge of of there was something recently where you could like um well you can communicate biologically to a digital system backwards and forth which, which was really interesting so you can like start bridge the gap between a biological system and an actual sort of a wearable where they can actually be communicating with each other but it's just it's just lagging behind because biology is way more way way more comp we get all excited about these digital things i spent like six months working on six little sensors right and if you just take one patch of skin like the amount of data coming from that is just insane so um we always big up our tech stuff but when you compare it to soil and biology, skin I mean, it's just to soil and skin well, good good soil anyway like there are billions of microbiomes in like a, a 12 inch square lump of soil trillions and that's and I re let's let's just if that's all right, Steve, we'll just pause that for a part two. <laughs> Anything part else two. you want me to rant about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna wrap us up a bit now because I'm <laughs> just gonna um I would love to for the next sort of five, six, seven minutes, I'd love to know about your like the mission you've mentioned the mission of your company. And I would ju we just love to know because uh, I don't know about the listener, but they might be visualizing new icon as Steve's just walking through the workshop and he's just got lots of robots doing all of his work. Right. And um, which probably sounds great. Um, but you've, I think you've got some humans at least working in your company. So so you do the run of the mill. You do the run of the mill day to day kind of business stuff. But tell us about your business, how it's set up. What do what do people do? What sort of projects are they involved in? Can you share about that for a couple of minutes? Um, yeah, sure. Um, well, New Icon actually is becoming probably two companies. You have a sort of, when we did the website part, we have like a team that help people with, you know, bringing their marketing message online and sort of the sort of the marketing tech part. Um, but we, but you know, New Icon, the New Icon tech part is very much, um, you know, I mentioned empowering change makers to invent the future. So we take people that have got great ideas and it could be, you know, small teams in large corporates as well that are trying to innovate and build better things. Um, and we take those and we 
we empower them with technology. So we make the, we, we, we make their dreams come true. We, we do a design phase. We rapidly help them visualize what they're trying to do. We flesh out the idea and then we help them build the technology to make that happen. Um, so, um, some example projects. Hmm. Well, something, that, something, that, something that we would under, something that my kids would understand. Can you give them a? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> sorry, my dogs attacking. Oh, the beer trolley is coming. <laughs> um, beer, beer trolley. The beer, the beer trolley's got beer on it in your company, right? There's an interesting project we're working on at the moment. Because it's called Ear Switch. It's for helping. Um, uh, people who with motor neurons disease and things like that that have lost control of their limbs use a mouse essentially by by having a a scope in the ear uh, that can detect a clip because this is one of the last um, sort of neurons that they lose the ability to control so they can still for a long time control so essentially you can do a click like a mouse click it could be a keyboard click by in the ear so we're working on some technology for that um uh, so oh, yes, please if they've got an independence or any such beer like thing i'd love thank you yes yeah, friday like it's one of those yes thanks oh no not stout any ale ish pale thing so for the listeners or that cut. listen to our for the <laughs> listeners that listen to our uh alcohol addiction podcast this is a different thing all right this is a Stout. You're not having a stout. What are you having? I don't know. There's a bit of a debate going on. What they they've got laser juice or something, haven't they? So um, basically, one it, second. Steve's talking to his AI. Um, yeah. His AI has just delivered him some beer, so we know what sort of programming Steve does. Wife, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Gemma. Steve's talking to a robot called Gemma, which Chat GPT G obviously stands for Gemma. <laughs> Yeah. Come on. <laughs> um yeah so you were just sharing with us uh what what the biz what the business functions as and it's no it's going to be no surprise what steve Cheers. what steve enjoys the most um what other questions that we oh, so, yeah i was talking about what work we're doing and, and things like that was i but yeah 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 and so um what no, I don't, I don't just want to make up a question. I want to just go back to AI for a second. We're going to have a session two at some point. So this morning, for example, basic communication. Chat GPT helps with basic communication, right? Mm, I mean, anything you want it to help with, really. As okay. long as you can express it as text. So, so I mean, it's really good at coding. If you want to learn coding, it's a good way to go and learn coding. So is that a dog or a cat? Dog. It's my dog. Yeah. So I'm talking to couples and parents all the time that are literally speaking different languages, right? So I, I'll give you an example of what happened with Florence this morning. She, We've got a paddling pool. The paddling pool's filled up with water. Florence point. I'm busy, right? So I walk into the living room. Florence points to the paddling pool and says, look, Look how look at the paddling pool. So paddling pools, by the way, make her supremely happy. Like she's as happy about paddling pools as you are about AI. All right, just to give it some kind of context. Now she she didn't actually want me to really look at the paddling pool. What she wanted was she wanted me to connect with her and feel the kind of joy she does about the paddling pool. Now there is very little joy for me about a paddling pool unless Florence, I'm watching Florence in the paddling pool. So if you've got a busy parent, right, who doesn't feel like they've got time and their child's wanting to share something with them and the parent says, I haven't got time to listen to this. The parent completely misses the point of the child wanting to share that moment with them and that, and the child's language almost not yet being mature enough to communicate what the person really, what she, Florence really wants to express. So the parent takes only the, I want you to, I want something else from you, but she just wanted to share her joy. That example is an example of a child communicating some information and the parent completely misinterpreting the information. So can AI help 
with communication in families? Um, I think it can help you. Me? Maybe understand some of the issues. If you've got something complex, you could maybe ask why something happens. And you can say, look, can you act like a such and such psychologist? He'll give you the caveat and say, I am just a language model. I am not really qualified to do a psychologist. This and you should really speak to a professional. But then it will give you the answer, right? So, um, and it's kind of sum summarizing the entire internet's knowledge, really, if you think of it like that. So that's a good way to think about it. I mean, if we extrapolate out further into the future, will AIs and machines be able to understand human emotions yeah that already exists like you know we can analyze photos and say a percentage of whether that person's happy or sad uh there's a lot of nuance there and these machines are getting really good so at some point they'll be better than at us you know they will be better at it at some point than we are even though they don't understand happy sad and all these complex emotions because of the vastness of data they would you know it's imagine like some of these machines like they get really be good at stuff because they've been trained on the equivalent of 300 years worth of data or they've played like there was the classic they played starcraft and it was just amazing at the game starcraft right and it's it's like played it for 300 years um and gone through more combinations than a human ever would and kind of that's the beauty of human intelligence really is being able to do something without with a tiny amount of the data it's like we're incredible at, at that and machines are not yet but when you do have the data machines can vastly outperform humans in a narrow field but that that we're only missing a few tricks you know um and there'll be it's probably i know i said oh there's another way of attacking ai and another algorithm which is actually studying neuroscience probably what will happen is we'll get both machines and then we'll merge them together and it will be this spectrum of ai that actually and so from that perspective will a machine be able to understand that nuance yeah you'd be able to probably have a have a machine in your house that analyzes all those and then tells you with no emotion then you are a bit of a well they take the emotion out so they're not going to call you names but you know they say and do you not realize that um in this interaction you're busy doing this you didn't even aware the context of what was going on and this emotion means this and they'll just be able to paint a picture so you'll be able to you know if you want to be better or if you want to understand those situations more you'll be able to tell you so you could have that looking and watching you 24 7 if you wanted who's right who's wrong <laughs> which is what i find relationships sometimes boil down to but um i don't know you I, I mean people probably will when they get good elect to have ai partners right it's already sort of happening so um you know, whoa, when you've whoa, got whoa, something whoa. listens to you, so uh, there's that, doesn't there's, doesn't there's, ever give you any, and just basically does you know. There's that move. There's that movie, isn't there? Her. You seen it? The Jacqueline Phoenix. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. So, so, so you've just basically said that's already happening. So you mean it's not? I mean, just it's happened. There's an app you can download, like this, like AI girlfriend or whatever, right? It's based on AI chat girlfriend. Chat. Pretty much, yeah. It's based on like the ChatGPT API when it was first launched. So it's not, it's not great, but you know, I'm hoping there's. Call not, it, I think, of, yeah. I'm hoping there's not AI husband. There's just AI girlfriend. Is there right well, now? That's AI partner or something like this. Yeah, yeah. I think well, there's one called Replica and another. I won't, I won't be sending Kerry this podcast for. <laughs> <sighs> well, I mean, yeah. See, so, and this is. It's what, not, you know, at the moment it's not cognizant. So it's like, well, but the, but then you can, you know, if it behaves like it, you know, you can get attached. Like that's what, what people are saying. I mean, I, th I think it's a bit strange to do it with something now because, you know, after 8,000 tokens, it's going to forget who you are again kind of thing. But um, when, it, when that doesn't happen and it can learn all about you and you can have those interactions, it'll be, it'll be different. Um, and it'll be interesting. Right. I, I don't know. I, this kind of goes out of my emotional intelligence sort of boundaries as to how that will work. I think it's not something I think about a lot, but I certainly hear people say, you know, there'll be a, a mark, there'll be a huge market probably for like, hey, a AI partner, which which can be the best therapist on the entire planet, listens to you, you know, will like you, <laughs> um, is able yes. to like be a coach um, and also be a partner then yeah it sounds pretty good or i mean I, part part of being in relationship with those is accepting and learning to love those imperfections isn't it and being challenged right um but then i suppose you can program that in as well random mode here you're gonna describe some some strange edge cases of your ai partner. <laughs>
yeah ah. we've just we just got to make sure there's a random node because i want i want to make sure you're making a choice to love me um so yeah let's just have the random button i'll just put you on random for today you know the um one of my keys one of my key skills is really listening to people and and i i, I pride myself on my ability to listen and what i can actually hear and it's just something i'm good at you know it's not it's not it's not even really that special a thing yet people love feeling listened to really well it is all and that's the thing it almost doesn't it's not about i really need ben lepier to listen to me i just want someone who can really hear me and understand me because i feel so trapped in my stuff in my head in my emotions wherever i'm trapped and and often the partner hasn't got the capacity to be that standing uh, uh um uh partner ai or whatever it's called yeah, if ai could really listen to me i don't know you know the way she talks to him in that movie it's like he's on a phone call with a real person and she's like hey i know yeah. you feel i know you re- i know you always feel a little bit upset about this tell me oh. i mean that's what kerry does to me hey i you always get upset about this particular thing tell me more about it and it's i mean all- how often are people on just autopilot in their relationships yeah. anyway and they're just right. they're just running the program of like Oh, mm, yeah. And then they go, did you actually listen to what I said? And you go, oh, shit, no. I know I was supposed to, but I totally just made a noise that implied I was. But part of my brain, I think, legitimately was, but it's that part of the brain's forgotten. <laughs> so, Because um, attention is a, is a vital, valuable asset that your brain tries its best to, you know, manage. Um but... So here's the, here's the thing. I'm going to wrap up now. The, the, I am not obsolete. You'll always need me. Plug for my business services. Um, oh, I see. What's what's been amazing is is, time, is you've helped us just take a different perspective. Take a have a conversation with someone who is using it, who's passionate about it, who understands it who can see the future and imagine and imagine the future. I think that's what's amazing here. And rather than it being, should we or shouldn't we, it's just, you talk about it so fondly, in my experience, listening into you, it's it's just helped me see the possibilities and how that can improve what I do rather than it being a fear and a worry of making me obsolete. How can it improve everything I do? And it's just an advancement of what we already rely on. I'm relying on this computer to host this call, record this call, store it somewhere sensible so I can get access to it, do a whole load of functions that I can't do. Even my calendar now, I'm so unhelpful with memory. My calendar gives me a text and an email to remind me to do a thing. So I'm I'm already completely dependent on Google for managing my time. And I don't seem to be too upset about that. That's a really helpful, fun- simple function to help me run my life day to day. So... I mean, you, you can just say like, okay, if, if you were higher the world, if you just had, say, I put, well, you had a billion dollars in your bank account or something, you could hire the world's most best expert to work in your company because you could pay a ridiculous salary. You know, it's, it's kind of like that. You know, it doesn't replace you necessarily, but you now have an expert that can help you with whatever you need help with. So does that make you obsolete to a certain degree? But you know, maybe for the things you want to be made obsolete on, but that's kind of a good thing. I think there'll always be, people always want to talk to humans, but uh, I mean, in the context of your business, you could train an AI to to be the Ben AI, right? With all your knowledge and all your, your learnings, previous lessons or something. And then people that maybe can have the time or, or you know, want, want access at a lower, lower, lower fee because you, you, you know, you're not time bound. You can't help everyone on the planet, let's say, but if you wanted to, then you could create the Ben AI and then everyone can have access to that. Like without you whilst you're asleep, people could be talking to the Ben AI, ben AI right? With, um, so that's kind of the scale issue. And I th- think that's what the key message. I don't think people are really picking up on the AI conversation. It's more the scale um, and like helping businesses that are gonna going to scale and build on top of that. So, and who um, knows what it looks like. What What do you think people are listening more to? Is there a fear and worry about what they're going to make? What's it's going to make obsolete? No, I, I, I don't understand the whole thing. Like, yes, it's something we need to talk about, but like, not 
everyone talking about it are just trying to get headlines and then the media don't do a great job because they just talk about Terminator and get everyone scared and it's like you know oh it's going to run away and escape on the internet and like we can't just um, pull the cord out it's, it's still computers it's like um it's just like attention grab the headlines i think if you actually work on the stuff and you realize how it works you're like oh it's cool it's cool it's a cool thing like but it's um it's not like skynet it's not gonna like i say intelligence is inert even if we have you know the the, the, the the people talk about ethics a lot of people talk about ethics a pet peeve of mine actually like ethics of ai ethics it's like we don't have an ethics issue we have a safety problem of like a system a technology system that doesn't behave the way we intend it to that's the risk so same with aircraft right you build put software on aircraft or you do some engineering the safety problem is when you want it to land you want landing gear to come down it doesn't come down or and then plane crashes that's a safety issue same with ai right when you when you set it to a task it's the it's the issue of it not behaving as you intended and it does something else because um we trusted it and actually the biggest danger i see with ai is just people blindly trusting the like what, what computers tell them uh, and so and not being able to challenge it there's some weird stuff in the states where they try to use it in courts and stuff to see if people reoffend all this kind of silly things and again it's about the signal to the noise and uh yeah i digress but um you know it's, it's it's the blind faith and and also saying that you can't challenge my ai my my algorithm because it's like proprietary it's like no um if it's in a if it's gonna be in a safety context where it can hurt people or or provide harm then it needs to be evaluated in the same way we certify other things like aircraft and medical devices great buddy Le leave us with a steve um one-liner what what would you say to the people? Say to your people. My people. <laughs> Don't even have to be about AI. What would you what are you gonna leave us with? Um what like inspirational or yeah, or something like future? that. Yeah. Something for the um, future. We don't get that often. Um, I would say look, none of this stuff is that hard. It's just a mat. It's just like a pyramid of knowledge. Um, it's like when you see someone play guitar um, for the first time, you think, "Wow, they can play guitar," but you don't see the effort they've put in. And so, you know, don't have to be. You know, if you want to, if you're worried about something, you have an idea, or you know, fear can be a good motivator. Like, um, follow that idea and use sort of design, which is like this drawing on whiteboards and telling those stories use that as a superpower because that's what we need more of less people talking technical jargon and more people I, even though i've done that quite a lot <laughs> um just you know use that power of design human connection and ideation to create that future that you want to see yes okay thanks buddy